Okay, let's try that again. Scott yeah. Shelton. Good morning, everyone. I will be introducing Scott Shires' sixth speech. Technically, it's his second one. He's not very organized, and he skipped it somehow. So it's technically number two, although it's number six. So today, he's tapping into his, his experience as a certified financial planner. Uh, he thinks, thinks it's pretty exciting stuff. Uh, yes, it is exciting to him, and it should at least be fun coming from Scott. So let me now present you, uh, Scott, and his speech is titled To Convert or Not to Convert. That is the question. Thank you. All right. Who could get excited about the high risk tax code, you know, government regulations, and all that kind of stuff? Yeah, all right, Phil. You go, my man. Bill, you ever notice that the IRS and the government have a different dictionary than the rest of us? When they say they're coming out with a tax simplification plan, simplification actually means complication and headaches, right? Okay. Well, that's what they've been doing for the last, I think, since uh, 2007. Each year they come out with a new tax simplification act. And it's not usually more simplified, but sometimes there are actually benefits in it. And one of the benefits that came out for this year is that you can take your traditional IRA and convert it to a Roth IRA. Now, this is really big news in the financial community. And so I'd like to give you a short primer on what is the difference between a traditional versus a Roth IRA. What does it mean to convert one to the other? And did you do it? What does that mean? So first, let's take a look at that traditional IRA. In its simplest form, it is a tax-deductible investment. You put money in, you get to deduct that money from your income taxes. The government limits how much you can put in each year to $5,000, unless you're like me and 50 or older this year, then you can put in $6,000. The money then grows, hopefully, until you go to take it out, at which time then it's all taxed as ordinary income. Now the question is, can you even do that if you want to? Because there's a lot of details in the code about whether or not you even qualify for doing that. But the first one is, if you do not have an employer-sponsored plan that covers you, you can do a deductible IRA. If you do have an employer-sponsored plan that covers you, like a 401k or another plan like that, then you're subject to income limitations. You can only do the deductible IRA if your joint income, if you're married, is less than $89,000 or less than $56,000 if you file as an individual, as a single person. <clears throat> now, in addition to your IRA contributions, I don't know why they call it contributions rather than investments, because we're in a voluntary tax system. You all knew that too, voluntary. <laughs> <laughs> it thanks you every, every year in your tax form. You should read it, you know, for volunteering, and you have to pay your taxes. <laughs> Try not volunteering. Anyhow. <laughs> There's a lot of other retirement plans. I can mention the 401k. There's also a whole lot of other numbers in there, 403Bs, 457s. Then they come up with cute names like the Simple Plan, the, the SARCEP, the SEP, the uh, Money Purchase, the Profit Sharing, and a myriad of other qualified retirement plans that operate very much like a traditional IRA where any money you put in gets deducted from your tax loan for that year. But that's another presentation. We'll save that one for another time. Now we're on to the Roth IRA. With the Roth IRA, you put money in, but you don't get to write it off on your taxes for this year. However, when you go to pull it out down the road, it comes out tax-free. So you have a question of which one do you do? Do you take the bird in the hand, the traditional IRA, where you get to write off right now, or two in the bush, where you don't get to write off now, but in the future you get to pull everything out tax-free? That is the question. Now, if you're young and in a low tax bracket, it typically makes more sense to do the Roth IRA. Because you have all that time for it to grow, and you have that, hopefully, due to the miracle of compound interest, a big amount to pull out later in your retirement years that will be all tax-free. But you can only do that if you are making less than $160,000, $167,000 as a married, or $105,000 as an individual. A lot of numbers. I'm sure we all want to be in that problem. You know, where you're making too much so you can't do the Roth IRA. So that brings up then the that's right. So that brings up then the second question of what if you don't qualify or you just you've been putting all your money into the traditional traditional IRA and you want to get more into that Roth IRA because you see your future being for retirement way off and you want to get that big two in the bush 
benefit of deferred taxation coming out tax-free from your Roth IRA. A lot of words, I know. <laughs> Take a breath, excuse me. <laughs> okay, I'm better now. <laughs> so, should you convert? And I know a lot of you are thinking, is this a Catholic church? Do I need the Pope? No, you don't. All you need is IRS's approval. And in 2010, we have a one-time special good deal. You can convert no matter what your income. Matter of fact, you can convert from now going forward all your traditional IRAs to Roth IRAs. But we have a special, even better, one-time good deal. Don't you just hear Bob Barker saying, come on down. This year only, in 2010, if you want to convert your traditional IRA to a Roth IRA so that it all grows tax-free in the future, you can defer your taxable income impact until 2011 and 2012. Good deal, only good for this year, otherwise in all future years your taxation happens in the year when you convert. But if you do convert, that means you have that taxable income to pay taxes on. That can be painful, no one likes to pay taxes, I don't like to pay taxes. So the $64,000 question is, really, are tax rates going to be going up also in the future? By a show of hands, who thinks tax rates are going down in the next few years? Any hands? We got one hand. Okay. By the same show of hands, who thinks taxes are probably going up in the next few years? Ah, okay. Well, I'm with the rest of you, as are most of the economists in this country that believe due to our deficit spending that the government has no choice but to raise taxes to raise income in the future. And with that being the case, if you have a few years, I'd say 10 or more is a no-brainer. If you've got 10 or more years for your money to sit in a Roth IRA and you believe that taxes will be higher in the future, it makes a lot of sense to convert some, if not all, of your regular IRA or 401k type funds after you roll them over into a Roth IRA and take advantage of tax-free income in your retirement. So, with all that and remembering what a simple subject this is, not, it is a very complicated subject, make sure that you talk to your investment advisor or your tax preparer to discuss this exciting topic and what it means to you. And of course remember, because your account has to deal with the strange dictionary of the IRS, there are a lot of pressure, remember to give your account a hug today. <laughs> All right. Excellent job, Scott.